Hey guys, thanks for joining me in this video. Today I'm going to be sharing with you my favorite beauty products for 2023. These are going to be my most used makeup products and I'm not going to be including Chanel makeup here because I already did a video with my favorite Chanel makeup products. As a lot of you know, this is my favorite brand. So I mention it, mention it quite often on this channel and that's why I wanted to make a separate video for all of the other products that I think are absolutely worth the splurge. These are my all-time favorites. Some of them are new, some of them are old products, so let's go ahead and get started. And don't forget to leave me a comment, let me know what are your favorites, current favorites, or what were your most used products for 2023. We're starting with foundations, and I have three classic foundations that are my favorite. I have one tinted moisturizer and one product that is in between skincare and makeup. I'm starting with the foundations. I have two favorite glowy foundations and one of these is not going to come as a surprise to a lot of you. This is my favorite Givenchy Prism Libre Skin Caring Glow Foundation. I tried some of the new releases, some of the newly released foundations um, last year, but I would say that I did not love them. These are the ones that I really use all the time. These are the ones that are in my top shelf and I use them daily. I absolutely love them. They are reaper just worthy. And one is the Prisma Libre Skin Caring Glow Foundation. This is a light coverage foundation that gives glowy finish. It's suitable for all skin types except I would say for oily skin. It has some skincare benefits and it's one of the this really beautiful foundations that I reach for when I want to look beautiful but I don't want my makeup to look as if I'm wearing makeup so I can just uh, apply a little bit of this one, blend it either with a brush with fingertips. It's a very pleasant texture. It lasts very well on my skin. They have a matte foundation as well, which I have, but I don't use it really. I use this one. I love the glow foundation. The other glowy foundation that I like, you can see that it's very loved, very used. This is the Dior Forever Natural Nude Foundation. Now this one is quite similar to the Numero 1 de Chanel foundation. This one has higher coverage compared to Givenchy. Um, it is a little bit thicker in terms of consistency and I prefer to apply this either with, um, usually with a brush, but you can apply this one with the beauty blender as well. Again, this is a very nice foundation. It gives a very natural finish. It has higher coverage than Givenchy. These two are my favorites and I would use this one if I want it to cover a little bit more because this one has more like a light medium coverage but can be built up to a medium coverage. And then my favorite matte foundation, this is the Clay Depot foundation. This is the Clay Depot Radiant Fluid Foundation Matte. It is absolutely gorgeous and this is one of the foundations that I have been repurchasing over the years so much and I really like the finish because it gives you this very natural looking skin, perfected. It blurs pores, it blurs imperfections and I would say that this is perfect for people who have normal to combination skin, normal skin. Even it looks very beautiful on dry skin as well because it is this very perfecting foundation. So this is if you want to have this really very, very beautiful skin that still looks like skin, but really perfected. Then we're moving on to two products that are somewhere in between skincare and makeup. They are makeup essentially, but they also contain some skincare ingredients. Well, this is my favorite tinted moisturizer from Sisley and I keep repurchasing this product all the time. It has light medium coverage. It can be light coverage, but it can be light medium depending on the amount that you apply. But I really like it because it's so comforting, soothing on my sensitive skin. It is moisturizing as well. It looks exactly like skin. It's so natural. And sometimes this is the product that I most often have in my handbag because every day I don't wear makeup. I never wear makeup on a daily basis. So I just apply sunscreen and go out and let's say if I have to meet someone and I'm on the go I have this one in my handbag and I could just very quickly apply this one with my fingertips just to feel a little bit better so this is this kind of product you can apply it even without a mirror it looks so beautiful on the skin so flattering I absolutely love this product this is the Fito Hydra Tand by Sisley. And then the other one is my Dior Dream Skin Moist and Perfect Cushion with SPF 50. This is excellent product if you want to just, um, of course, you should be wearing your dedicated SPF, 
but I like to use this one on top and it looks lovely on the skin. This cushion comes with um, refill. When you first buy this compact, you're getting one compact and one little refill inside. So this makes it quite nice and suitable. I really like it. Next, we're going to be moving on to powders and I have a few powders that I want to share with you. I have four powders actually that I use all the time. I absolutely love them. I would repurchase each one of them. I'm going to start with my favorite Givenchy Prisma Libre powder. This is um, one of my most repurchased loose powders ever. I like this powder because it helps to erase pores, literally. If applied with a damp beauty blender, it helps to erase pores. It makes the complexion so perfected, so beautiful. And I would suggest this powder for people who have oily skin. It's excellent for people who have dilated pores or oily skin or a normal to combination skin, or if you just want to have this really perfected skin, this is the powder that I would suggest. It's absolutely beautiful. You can see how I like to use it in this video where I created a flawless makeup look, usually, this is the powder that I use when I want to really perfect my skin a lot and when I want everything to look good from, from the morning until night, it never gets cakey and it can be reapplied during the day. My other favorite powders, I have a couple of powders that I, um, I have one honorary mention here because I don't have this powder right now, but it's excellent for people who have dry skin. And this is the loose powder of Sisley. It is as beautiful as Givenchy, but let's say I would suggest Givenchy to those of you who are struggling with pores and with a more oily complexion. And I would suggest the Sisley Loose Powder for those of you who have dry skin, dehydrated skin. So if you have dryness, dehydrated skin, but you still want powder that is going to that is going to make the complexion absolutely flawless, gorgeous, perfect uh, and poreless, then the Sisley Loose Powder is going to be the one for you. My next favorite powder is going to be the Hermes Compact Powder. You can see that I have a dent in this powder is great for blurring. Also, the compact is not heavy at all and it's very comfortable to be uh, carried in a handbag. And this is the powder that I most often am going to carry in my handbag because I can very easily touch up during the day or even if I don't wear the teeniest, tiniest bit of makeup and I want a little bit of a blur, it almost is like a filter to the face. But one thing that I have to mention about this powder, I think that it is white. And I think that for people who have um, deeper skin tones than mine, it is going to appear a little bit white. So this is the only issue that I have with this powder um, that you might have with this powder. It's excellent for people like me who have fair skin tones, but I think that uh, Hermes should add more colors because this is not completely translucent. You are going to see a little bit of color and I think that's why it's going to be mostly suitable for people who have very fair skin tone, light skin tones. And then my last favorite powder is going to be the La Mer Loose Powder. Even though the opening is a little bit messy, this is a powder that, that I like to use daily and I like to apply this one. Okay, this is the downside. When I open it, it comes with this fancy puff of Lomer, which I don't use. I just use it to close the little um, holes here. Even though every time I open it, I get a little cloud of powder, I find that it works really nice on my sensitive skin. It does add, add a little bit of coverage and it's not like the Givenchy powder. So it's not for, um, poo. it's not for really for blurring, for erasing pores, but I would say that this is your classic powder that is going to mattify the face. Sometimes I use it only on top of sunscreen. So this is how I use this powder. So it's not going to be for everyone. It's not everyone's cup of tea, but I still like it, still really like it, even though it's quite expensive. And mostly because I most often use it only on top of my sunscreen. So I would apply generously my sunscreen and then use this powder on top without foundation, concealer or anything. And I was almost going to forget another favorite. Again, very suitable, I would say, for all skin types. But this one, I would suggest it also to people who have um, very sensitive skin 
maybe some issues with sensitivity because this is a really good one uh, and this is the Westman Atelier Compact Powder. It is quite small, quite pricey, but I think it's worth the splurge. I had the one in Pink Bubble and it works so beautifully under the eyes to set the makeup under the eyes. It doesn't look like powder at all and it just sets the makeup so beautifully. Again, it has a light blurring effect, which I love. The compact is very beautiful. It comes with a little dust uh, bag. And this is a pure luxury. I really like them. Even though the Westman Atelier products are so expensive, this is my favorite clean beauty brand that I really love. I would suggest this one to anyone who has dry skin or all skin types, actually. If you can afford it, I think it's a beautiful powder. Next, we're moving on to blushes. And I have two favorite blushes from Cara Weiss. Probably the one blush that I love the most. This is one of my most used one. It is from Cara Weiss and this is Reverence. Now the shades that I have, the colors that I have from Cara Weiss are quite pale. And keep in mind that they are going to work for a complexion that is quite fair, like mine. But the formula is absolutely gorgeous. So I think that these are my all time favorite cream blushes. I love them so much. They feel incredible on the skin. You can apply them on the go with your fingertips. And again, these two are products that I can carry in my handbag. And in case I need to meet someone, uh, this is like a very quick pick me up combo that I would just apply a little bit of the um, Sisley tinted moisturizer and then a little bit of blush and I feel so much more beautiful and so much more awake. And it takes me only like a minute uh, or a minute and a half for this whole makeup look. I love that it doesn't emphasize pores, fine lines. This is the best cream blush that I've used. And my favorite shades are Reverence is definitely the one that I would choose if I only had to pick one. And then the other one that I really like is Embrace. Both of them look very natural on my skin tone. And then we're moving on to a couple of powder blushes. My most used powder blush is from Hermes and this is Rose Plume. This is the blush. It gives the reason why I love this is because it gives a blurring effect. It is like the powder and it even better than the powder, the compact powder at blurring. So you know that sometimes some people might have some dilated pores around here. I would really recommend this blush even though it's quite expensive because it blurs pores and it blurs imperfections. So it gives a very blurred effect on the cheeks and that's why I love it. And also the shade Rose Plume May is my personal favorite. I have a few of the Hermes blushes, but this is the one that I use all the time. So the others, I basically don't use them, but this is the one that I use all the time. It's in my top drawer. And then the other blush that I love is a new release, used to be a new release. And this is 449 from Dior. I really like this neutral blush. For me, it is my perfect, almost like a nude neutral blush. I have been using it a lot. Next, I want to mention my favorite bronzers and one of them is from Rare Beauty. I love this stick bronzer. It's so soft, buttery, smooth, beautiful. Um, it is the perfect bronzer for me and I have been using it a lot. And also my powder bronzer, my favorite powder bronzer, of course, it's going to be from Guerlain. They, I think they make the best powder bronzers. And I have a lot of Guerlain powder bronzers, but a lot of them are limited edition, limited edition and not available anymore. So the one that is currently still available is um, the Terracotta Light in Light Warm. This is the one that I use, but any, it all depends on your skin tone, but I think that Guerlain have, this is the brand that has the best powder bronzers of all times. I really love Guerlain's bronzers. They are just so soft and smooth and beautiful on the skin. So you just have to pick your color. And they often make limited edition, truly beautiful bronzers that sell out and then you can't buy them anymore. I have so many of those. Next, we're moving on to highlighters and my number one highlighter for 2023 and my most used highlighter was the Gucci highlighter. It's a liquid highlighter that it just looks so flattering and beautiful on the face. I don't even think when I have a business meeting or when I want to look so uh, naturally, when I want to add to my face a very natural glow, this is the one that I would use. I know that I have been mentioning it so many times. One little downside that we might have here is that the dropper doesn't always work properly. 
especially as you go through the end of the bottle the dropper stops working very properly but you actually don't really need to use the dropper because most of the time I just take out the dropper a little bit on my hand and then from here I'm going to tap it on my face. I have used it so much like every single day and I still haven't gone through this one. I hope that Gucci are going to add more colors because this is one of the most beautiful liquid highlighters that I have used. I like the packaging, I like everything about this highlighter and you can mix it with the foundation if you want to. You can apply it under your foundation or on top of your foundation. You can apply it on top of powder and it still adds this very shiny beautiful look. Let's say if you want to have a completely matte look uh, and flawless and then at the very end of your makeup, on top of your powder, you can add this one just here on the high points of the face to bring back the glow, but to have this very controlled, beautiful glow. So this highlighter gives a lot of opportunities. You can use it in a variety of ways and you can achieve different effects by that. It's one effect that you're going to achieve if you apply it all over your face under your foundation or if you mix it with the foundation or if you apply it on top of your powder. These are all different effects that you're going to get with this highlighter and I really like that. And then I have two favorite powder highlighters. One is I like them equally but they are very different. In, the price is very different. So one is from Clay Depot and the other one is from MAC. Clay Depot is a brand that has been famous for their, their highlighters for ears and they do incredibly beautiful powder highlighters. They are also very pricey but they look so natural and gorgeous on the face and on the skin and they really give this very healthy look on the skin. So I really like it. I love also the packaging. It's very luxurious. It's very very beautiful. But if you don't want to spend that much money I think that the MAC highlighter is equally beautiful. And this is the one in particular that I like and that I use. So the MAC highlighter is Double Gleam Extra Dimension Skin Finish. It gives the most beautiful natural glow. You can build up the highlight if you want. Next we're moving on to eyeshadows and I have two new releases of 2023 that I love. And then I have one timeless eyeshadow palette that has been around for years but it's still as beautiful. So I loved the new Clay Depot eyeshadows. They were created by Benjamin Pucky. I really like his work as a makeup artist. I think that he's incredibly talented. And I have a few of these Clay Depot eyeshadows. They are refillable. So in a way, I would say that the price is justified. It's all up to you. These are quite expensive. Clay Depot is a premium brand and their makeup products are quite expensive but I really like the, the new eyeshadows that were created. And the one that I use the most, I'm going to show you actually which one is it because I cannot see the shade here on the back because you get the case and then you get the refillable eyeshadows. But this is the one that I have been using the most this year. And you can see that I don't even have a dent. So this shade here is a primer and all the other shades are eyeshadows. So this one is a very interesting texture. It's almost like, it almost feels like something in between cream to powder. It's very nice and you're supposed to use this one first and then use any of these three eyeshadows to create the look. It is a beautiful palette. It has the signature scent of Clay Depot um, highlighters and makeup products, but I would say that it's not bothering me at all. Still, if you want your products not to be fragranced, just keep in mind that these eyeshadows are lightly fragranced, but you're not going to feel it on the eyelids. Or personally, I don't feel the scent once I start applying the eyeshadow. So I just feel the scent if I smell it. But it's so pleasant. It's a light floral scent. I love the formula of these. I love the color combinations that Benjamin created and this is the one that I used the most. I just wanted to pick one that I really used so much and I don't even have a dent on these. So the powders are firmly pressed and I think that they are going to last for a very long time. The other one that I loved, again, this was a new release and this was part of Guerlain's um, fall makeup collection. And they released two eyeshadow palettes. I have both of them and I reviewed both of them. But the one that I keep using 
and if I had to choose only one, this was going to be it, because the colors are very nice. This is a brown neutral palette, but this is almost like a pumpkin color. And overall, I love the quality of Guerlain eyeshadows. I love the packaging as well. Then I was almost going to forget about um, some of my favorite releases of 2023, and this were. I loved these three eyeshadow palettes from Tom Ford. They come with, with the classic wet and dry formula. And my favorite release was this one. This is Hazy Sensuality. I love each color here. And this actually, this video actually reminded me that I have to start using this palette again because this was one of my favorite releases of the year. I really like all of these colors. So this is how the colors look and I've even tried actually using some of these colors on my cheeks and on my face and it looks very nice, very flattering. So you can definitely experiment with this eyeshadow palette. And then the other and then the other two colors were Golden Hour and Peach Dawn. Now I use uh, some colors from here. I really like them. Now from the Golden Hour, the color that I have been using the most is this one. I like to use it just all over my eyelid because it's such a beautiful shade. And I'm gonna go ahead and swatch it here and if you're interested to see all of these colors my arm is already stained from all of the swatches but if you're interested to see uh, close-ups and swatches of these palettes all in natural light uh, along with my with my thoughts then definitely go ahead and check out my full review I'm going to make sure to link the video I also like this palette this is peach dawn but again I use mostly this and this color and I like to use them all over the eyelid. I've used them this summer. So this color here is my favorite. Really have been loving it. So you can see such a beautiful, it gives a very beautiful sheen. So this collection was beautiful from Tom Ford. I loved it so much that I decided to purchase the three palettes, but I was wondering for this video which palette I should share because I really use this one the most and I love this one the most. This is the Hazy Sensuality. But then I love the Golden Hour, this pink color here uh, because it's a very interesting pink, quite unique that I don't have in my collection and I really like it as one and done eye color. It just looks so flattering. And then I've also loved Peach Dawn for the late summer months, especially this color here. The color combinations are quite interesting. Then I have to mention also the beautiful clutch from Dior. This was part of the holiday collection, but I, it's probably my favorite release of the year for Dior. I loved everything about this palette. The colors were so soft, so beautiful. This is a gorgeous highlighter. And if you're interested to see swatches of the whole palette and me using the palette, I'm definitely going to, I'm going to leave a link to a video where I showed you everything. Initially, I thought that this was going to be a dark highlighter for me. And as you can see on my finger, it does look dark. But then when I use it on my face as a highlighter, you can probably see now when I apply this one on my arm. It will be interesting to see this one on my face because it really looks so lovely. And then you have top four timeless lip colors. The blushes are truly spectacular. And these two are my favorite colors. They are very soft. The formula of this palette is beautiful. You have to keep in mind that my arm is really dry at the moment because I washed it so many times. My skin is already dry, but I love each color in the palette. I love also the highlighter. I love the blushes and I love the lip colors. And you can see this whole palette on my face in case you're interested. I think that this was my favorite release uh, from Dior for 2023. It was absolutely worth the splurge and for me absolutely worth the investment. I'm not really sure if they still have it. Probably some countries might still have it. And then last but not least, I have one timeless eyeshadow palette. This one is not new. It's the Charlotte Tilbury, the Sophisticated Eyeshadow Palette. And it's purely a very sophisticated eyeshadow palette suitable for all occasions. And I think that this is one of the timeless makeup product in my collection. This contains all four matte colors 
And I have created a look using this eyeshadow palette. I believe that it was actually my French holiday makeup look, if I'm not mistaken, from my new series on my YouTube channel. So I'm going to link to this video so that you can watch it, you can see how it looks. But every time when I'm in doubt, I know that I can rely on this palette to sculpt the eyes in a very beautiful way. Then I have two very extraordinary products that I consider them to be somewhere in the middle between a highlighter and a blush. And these are from Westman Atelier. I love Westman Atelier's um, super loaded tinted highlights. They can be used as a blush or as a highlighter depending on your skin tone and depending on the amount of product that you apply to your face. So my two favorites are Peau de Santé and Peau de Rosé. These are the ones that work best on my skin tone. I also have Peau de Peche. Peau de Soleil is way too dark for me. I do not have this one because it really looks very dark on my skin, but I love Peau de Peche. Still, it's not, I don't use it as often as I use Peau de Santé and Peau de Rosé. And these are my princess products. I don't know exactly what they do for me, but they just make me happy because I love the texture, I love the packaging, I love the glow that they give to my face. Now, it's very unfortunate that Peau de Rosé has this little shimmers this little glitters inside. If it didn't have the little glitters, it was going to be absolutely stunning, perfect, completely flawless. But even with the little glitters, they don't bother me a lot because I always apply this product and then I apply a blush. I usually like to combine Peau de with a cream blush and then the little glitters are not really that visible on the face. I'm having a hard time to share with you my favorite lipsticks because I tend to change them every day. I have a big lipstick collection and that's why I tend to use different lipsticks depending on my mood, depending on the day. So I'm going to share with you one lipstick that I will always have in my collection. I know that this is so expensive, but this is my one of my all-time favorite lipsticks when I want to feel uh, beautiful. And this is a statement almost like a fuchsia color. This is the color that I'm wearing today on my lips. This lipstick is by Hermes and I find that it is the my favorite statement lipstick. And I cannot replace this one, even though I tried so hard to find a dupe to this one, a more affordable dupe, I still cannot find something that I like as much as I like this one. So this remains my number one. And that's why I thought that it's going to be nice to share this in in this video to share the lipstick in this video i also have one nude pink color that i love to use for every day and this one is from sisley it's number 20 rose portofino this is one of my favorite everyday colors i really like it and then one of my favorite office colors that is like um i would say office friendly reddish color or office friendly statement color. This is from Clay de Peau and it's called Unapologetic. This is if you are, if you don't want to wear a statement red color but you still want to make an impression, I think that this color is safe to wear in the office. It's just a very elegant, very beautiful lip color. Then I love, and these are two of my probably my two most repurchased lip balms from Guerlain. I always tend to repurchase two colors. One is Fuchsia Glow and the other one is Lavender Glow. Fuchsia Glow being my all-time favorite because it adds a healthy color to the lips. And these are really nice lip balms. I will always keep repurchasing them. Okay guys, and finally it's time to talk about the fails of 2023. And these, do not get me wrong, these are not really like fails. Uh, and I'm going to explain why. These are products that I am not fully satisfied with. I know that they're going to work for some people. Now the first one that I'm going to mention are going to be the YSL Mini Clutch Palettes, which I love in terms of quality, but there is a serious issue with these palettes and that's why I'm putting them into fails because this shouldn't happen with a luxury eyeshadow palette. These were not cheap. These were quite expensive. Initially, when these eyeshadows launched, I was 
so attracted to the packaging, to the formula, to the colors that I ordered five of them. I first purchased two and then I ordered three more because I really love them. I love the packaging. There is there is not really a stitching, but it does look like stitching. And I think that we can all agree that the packaging is to die for. It's so beautiful. But then one serious issue, and it happened with all of them, is that the colors just pop out. And I did not know that. And unfortunately, with my favorite, was fully destroyed because I didn't expect that it was going to pop out. And um, I was doing my makeup. The colors started to pop out fast. I brought them back, but then the whole little set of four eyeshadows pops out as well. And I have to, I had to glue each one of them. I didn't like, I glued, I believe, two or three of them, and then the rest I didn't have the patience to glue them. I think that you should be aware of, of this fact. It may not happen, but I think that for most people it happened because I posted stories showing how they pop out on Instagram. And then I got so many messages from you saying that the, the exact same thing happened with their palette. So this is not just a coincidence. It is happening with these palettes. And I think that they can work a little bit on the packaging. Apart from that, if they fix the packaging, the powders are beautiful and the quality of the powders they are quite extraordinary. The mattes are very soft, um, very lovely. The formula is quite unique, I would say. So that's why I keep using them from time to time. They also have beautiful shimmers. They have matte colors and the matte colors, I would say, are what makes this eyeshadow quite extraordinary because the mattes are just so soft, powdery, like unlike any eyeshadows in my collection. So it all depends on you. To the side still the packaging is beautiful and if you're careful just if you expect that this is going to pop out and you just handle the palette carefully you can still use it you can still buy it but you have to be aware of the fact and prepared that these might pop out the other fail that i had was very unfortunate for me because this is a beautiful product and i know that a lot of you love them these are the dior lip maximizers i love them and they make such beautiful, such pretty colors every time for every collection. And I so want to like them, so want to be able to wear them because the colors are to die for. But they have a very strong, very strong mint flavor. For me, it's very strong mint flavor that burns my lips terribly. And I just could not use them. I tried also, um, so if you have the same issue like me, what I tried and what helped just a little bit was from time to time, I would just leave them open for like 20 minutes or so. And somehow the this very strong minty flavor kind of goes away, but for, but a little bit still, it's not something that I would purchase. I really wish this could work for me. And I really wish they would tone down this mint flavor because it really burn, burns my sensitive lips. It makes them red. It makes them... Um, one of the times when I said, okay, I'm going to insist, insist on using these because they are beautiful. I like the colors. I want to use them and I want so many people use them. And I thought to myself, well, you know what? I'm just going to insist and I'm going to use them. So I wore one of these lip balms, um, lip maximizers a whole day. And then the evening when I came home, my lips were, you know, you, you stop feeling the burn at some point. <laughs> you stop feeling the burn. But then the, in the evening, I felt that my lips had some little grains almost under the skin. And I felt scared and I just stopped using them. It just doesn't work for me. I want them to work. And if I may, if they make a similar version of a lip gloss or any kind of lip maximizers, but minus this minty flavor, I'm going to be a huge fan. I'm going to buy so many of those because I really like them. But these did not work for me. So that was all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for joining me. And don't forget to leave me a comment. Let me know what were your favorites and your most used products and some discoveries. And also let us know if you had any fails because I think that this is uh, really valuable for our whole community. If you experienced some fails with products, let us know. And until next time, bye.